Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev bringing you another SQL tutorial and in this video we're going to be talking about check constraints. Now if you are new to the channel do check out my recent videos uploaded. There's some excellent content on there and there are some associated videos as well. I've got another SQL tutorial on creating tables with constraints and don't forget let me know what videos you want to see in the comments below. So check constraints, they enforce control on the values that can be added to a column. So we're going to go through that now. So I've come over to SQL Server Management Studio and I'm just going to quickly throw together a simple create table statement. Uh, it's going to be a table called sales. I'm just going to have a sales ID in here which is going to be an integer and an identity column. Uh, I'm going to have a sales date, uh, which is just going to be a date data type, and I'm going to have a sales value as well, which is the column we're going to be focusing on for our check constraint. So I'm just going to set that to a decimal. So there we have a very simple create table statement. Now, like I say, the sales value column is what we want to pay particular attention to. Now, with the decimal data type, users are able to enter negative values into that column but we don't want any sales that have a negative value so the way we further enforce that data type is to add a check constraint we want to check that the value being added is greater than zero so the simplest way to do that is after we've defined our data type we're just going to write the keyword check and I'm going to open brackets and write our column name which is sales underscore value and we're going to say greater than zero so that will create a check constraint on that column so that users are prevented from entering values that are less than or equal to zero so I'm just going to go ahead and execute that execute that statement now so that's completed successfully and I'm just going to open up our database in Object Explorer just refresh that and we've got our new table sales there and if I look at my columns I've got sales ID sales date sales value and we've got our constraints here and we can see the name of our constraint is CK underscore sales underscore sales underscore value and then some code that's added now the reason that is named so is because we haven't indicated what we want this constraint to actually be named so SQL Server by default add some digits to there for us just to enforce that, that we won't be using that constraint name again so what could we do if we wanted to add our actual own name to this constraint so it's a lot easier for us to manage so what we would do, I'm just going to, instead of writing out the create table statement again, I'm just going to call this sales underscore two. And again, we're going to be focusing on the sales value column. So what I'm going to write here is the keyword constraint. And then I'm going to give this a name. Now, because it's a check constraint, I tend to always start with CK underscore and then I'll refer to the table sales underscore two and then I'll refer to the column sales underscore value and then again we have the keyword check and then in brackets sales value greater than zero so if I go ahead and execute that statement now and refresh our tables in object explorer open up sales two we've got the same columns and if I look at constraints, I've now got a name of the constraint that means something to me. So we've managed to create our constraint now. So we're hoping that that will check that any value that is entered is going to be greater than zero. So let's go ahead and test that. So we're going to insert into sales underscore two. Uh, sales, in fact, we'll leave that blank. Sales date and sales value so just a simple insert statement here we'll just add the current date and we'll say the sales value is minus in fact we'll start off with one just to indicate how that works and we'll go ahead and execute that 
we'll have a look at our sales to table just to see what's been inserted just to see everything's in order and um, we can see we've got one row inserted with a sales value of one now how about if we try to insert another row this time with a value of minus one so we know our check constraint checks the sales value to say it must be greater than zero so if we go ahead and execute this statement now we will get an error to say the insert statement conflicted with the check constraint so we know our check constraint is working correctly there so we've gone over a few quick examples there of how a check constraint can be useful. Um, really, I, I look at it as extending the capabilities of data types, so further limiting what values can be entered. The last thing we want to do is further down the line we find out that we've got sales inserted with negative values that we then have to address in our data. Okay, so the next point we're going to look at within check constraints is it only prevents values that evaluate to false from being entered. So if the column allows nulls, then nulls can be added. So what I mean by false is remember our three predicate three predicate logic within SQL Server. So predicates can be evaluated to true, false or unknown. So a value, like we went through in example, uh, a value less than zero would evaluate to false. A value greater than zero would evaluate to true, so that can be inserted. But if I wanted to insert a null, then that will evaluate to unknown, which according to this wouldn't be prevented from being inserted. So we're going to go over an example of that now. So we've just got one row within our sales two table at the moment. And I'm going to just reuse the insert statement just to save me writing that out again. So we can see in our sales value column we haven't limited that to not allow nulls. So by default the, tab uh, the column will allow nulls. So I'm just going to insert null there and run that insert statement again. And we can see we've got one row affected. If I run a query against that table we've got the sales value as null so the check constraint wouldn't prevent that if I didn't want to allow nulls I just set that column to not allow nulls so that is something that's important to remember and can cause a lot of problems because people think that check constraints will enforce that nulls are not allowed but you actually have to indicate that that column will not allow nulls so the next point worth mentioning is that constraints are associated to tables. If the table is removed from the database, so is the constraint. So we'll go through an example of that now. So as we've seen in Object Explorer, if I just open up sales and our constraints here, we can see our constraint is under the table. So I'm going to write a drop statement. So I'm just going to drop table uh, DBO sales. So I'm just going to execute that now. That's executed successfully. I'm just going to refresh Object Explorer again. So tables has been removed. And again, that constraint has been removed from the database because it is associated to that table. Another important point when working with check constraints is we can only add a check constraint to an existing table if the requirements of that constraint are met. So again, I'm just going to use the same create table statement. I'm going to remove our constraint and I'm going to insert some default values into this table. So I'm just going to put a zero and we'll put another, another row into this table with a value of minus 100. So I'm just going to execute that all together and just show you that table so if we just select all from sales underscore three and have a look at what that looks like so we've got two sales rows in there we've got our two sales IDs and we've got a sales value of zero and hundred now if I wanted to add a check constraint to an existing table the syntax for that is we want to alter table uh, because again check constraints are associated to tables and we're going to add constraint we're going to give it a name ck sales3 underscore sales value something that means something to us and we're going to that's going to be check 
sales value underscore value greater than zero so we're going to highlight that and execute that now and we get an error to say the auto uh, table statement conflicted with the check constraint because because we've already got data within that table that violates the check constraint we cannot add that so a way around that would simply to be update that ta the data in the table so I'm just going to update our sales table uh, we'll set sales value equals one for both rows so I'm just going to run that now and if I again execute my alter table statement to add our new constraint that checks the sales value is greater than zero, that has now executed successfully. If I refresh in Object Explorer again and look at sales three under constraints, we can see our constraint now shows. So that's something important to recognize as well. When we want to add a constraint to an existing table, we use the alter table statement. Uh, with our table name we add the constraint with our constraint name constraint type in this case check and then the value of what we want to check for but we'll only be able to add that constraint if the requirements are met by the data within that column already now if we want to have a look at the existing constraints we've seen we can check those within Object Explorer against the individual tables but there is also a system table that we can look at so sys.check underscore constraints uh, will show details of all the check constraints in that database so if I just write a query to select all from sys.check underscore constraints we can see the details of our two constraints within the database so we've got our name here we've got our object ID which belong to the individual constraints we've got our parent object ID which will belong to the table so that is the object ID of the tables that they are associated with uh, we can see our types of constraints when they were created when they were modified if they're disabled so we might not want to actually drop a constraint uh, we can also disable that by setting that is disabled flag to one as within this table and lastly we're going to go over how to drop a constraint so again with dropping a constraint if we're not going to drop the table we're going to be altering the table and we just simply so we'll drop the one against sales three so we'll alter table sales underscore three and we'll write drop constraint and then we simply need our constraint name so just indicating on before how important it is to give it the constraint a name that means something to you that you'll be